सो टुडे विल टेक इन डे वन जीरो थ्री एम सी क्यू टेस्ट योर नॉलेज ऑफ इन डे वन जीरो थ्री एम सी क्यू दिस विल कवर लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ इन डे वन जीरो थ्री एंड यू विल बी एबल टू चेक फॉर योर सेल्फ हाउ मच यू आर प्रिपेर्ड फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑन योर स्क्रीन कंपनी पी ओन्स एंड ऑपरेट्स रेस्टोरेंट ग्रुप्स इन वेरियस मेट्रोपॉलिटन एरिया पी अक्वायर्स कंपनी एस अ ग्रुप ऑफ टेन रेस्टोरेंट्स लोकेटेड इन अ मेजर सिटी द अक्वायर्ड सेट ऑफ एक्टिविटीज एंड एसेट्स इंक्लूड लैंड लीज एसेट एंड लीज होल्ड इम्प्रूवमेंट equipment and the right to trade name used by the restaurant group p also offers employment to the restaurant's employees including management level employees service staff and chef but p does not acquire s procurement system used to purchase the food drinks and other supplies necessary to operate the restaurant state whether the acquisition will be accounted for as a business combination good question it can come for four marks also if there are no options given so what is your answer can we call it as a business combination there is input also substantive process also output also but there is one process which is not taken over procurement system is it necessary that you have to acquire every process those process which can be easily replicated from outside or in case company p already has a procurement system which they can use so there is no need to acquire procurement system and still it will be called as a business combination so what is the right answer seems to be right option b is the right answer question number 2 which of the following accounting methods must be applied to all business combination under indias 103 which accounting method must be applied for all business combination under indias 103 purchase method proportionate consolidation equity method or pooling of interest method so the answer is purchase method pooling of interest method we apply only for common control transaction equity method we apply for associates and joint venture proportionate consolidation method is not there it is applied only for joint operation joint operation and this method is applied for business combination so the correct answer tick mark is d question number 3 purchase accounting requires an acquirer and an acquiry to be identified for every business combination where a new entity h is created to acquire two pre existing entities s and a which of these entities will be designated as the acquirer which of the entities will be designated as the acquirer question has not given complete information who will control whom who will get a better stake in that company or higher stake in that company so usually one of the two will get more stake in that company and therefore the company which will get a higher share can be treated as the acquirer so the answer can be h also or the answer can be a or s also two answers are possible for this question if more information was given we could have answered it so you tick mark d the one who will get more stake in that company will be treated as acquirer then you come to question number 4 which of the following examples is unlikely to meet the definition of intangible asset for the purpose of indias 103 which of the following is not likely to meet the definition of intangible asset think and answer marketing related such as trademark and internet domain name 
customer related such as customer list and contracts technology based such as software and database and d pure research based such as general expenditure on research general expenditure on research will not be classified as intangible asset so the answer is d although research asset can be taken over if it is it if it meets the definition of business if it meets the definition of business there is input and substantive process which have the capability to produce output general research expense will not be treated as intangible asset question number 5 an acquirer should at the acquisition date recognize goodwill acquired in a business combination as an asset goodwill should be accounted for as follows option a recognize as an intangible asset and amortize over its useful life do we amortize goodwill write off against retained earning no recognize as intangible asset an impairment test when a trigger event occurs no goodwill is to be tested for impairment annually or more frequently if impairment is indicated so therefore the correct answer is d yes the answer d was right question number 6 please participate if the impairment of the value of goodwill is seen to have reversed suppose you think goodwill impairment is reversed then the company may reverse the impairment charge and credit income for the period goodwill impairment cannot be reversed reverse the impairment charge credit to whatever whenever they see reverse it is a wrong option not reverse the impairment charge goodwill impairment is not reverse reverse the impairment charge only if the original circumstances blah 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 reversal is not allowed only it will amount to creating self generated goodwill whenever they talk about reversal that option is wrong the correct answer is option c question number 7 in des 103 requires that the contingent liability of the acquired entity should be recognized in the balance sheet at fair value the existence of contingent liability is often reflected in a lower purchase price the existence of a contingent liability is often reflected in a lower purchase price recognition of such contingent liability will so what will be the effect of recognizing contingent liability it will decrease the value attributable to goodwill thus decreasing the risk of impairment of goodwill decrease the value attributed to goodwill thus increasing the risk of impairment of goodwill increase the value attributable to goodwill thus decreasing the risk of impairment of goodwill increase the value attributable to goodwill thus increasing the risk of impairment of goodwill only if you can visualize the treatment you will be able to answer what is the treatment for business combination asset account debit to liabilities to consideration first to understand this much and balancing figure is goodwill if i add one more liability here contingent liability goodwill will increase so first we will eliminate those options which have decreased the value of goodwill now we have two options left c and d increase the value of goodwill but if goodwill value increases risk of impairment will also increase the risk of impairment will also increase let us see whether the answer is d yes this is called applying intelligence and in, uh, elimination method also there is one question number 8 in our book but that will require some correction two correction one line you have to add in that question one line you have to add in the question here major nci at fair value 
second correction you have to write in the option given here this option you rectify i think in your book some different figure is there make it 12.5 million now let us read the question entity a purchases 30% of the ordinary share capital of entity b for dollar 10 million on 1st january 2004 first lot was purchased on 1st january 30% and how much consideration was paid 10 million the fair value of the asset of entity b at that date was 20 million so that time it was 20 million on 1st january 2005 entity a purchased a further 40 percent of equity of entity b for 15 million dollar so for 40 percent they have paid 15 million is it right so we have to revalue the previously held 30 percent also what will be the value of that 30 percent stake now for 40 percent stake you have paid 15 million so we have to revalue the previously held equity interest how much 11.25 revaluation of previously held equity interest plus we have to also add nci nci is also holding 30 percent nci will also be fair valued nci will also be fair valued so the total value of consideration plus nci is how much 37.5 what is the fair value of identifiable net asset 25 million identifiable net asset ina is 25 million now it says on 1st january 2004 entity a does not have significant influence over entity b what value would be recognized for goodwill before any impairment test in the cfs for the year ended 31st december 2005 so what would be the value for goodwill is it 12.5 you can mention the calculation also left side right side in your book if you want so this itself can be a four mark question to identify goodwill 12.5 million option c calculation i have disclosed okay try one more question in mcq it will be one mark otherwise it can be a four mark question separately question number nine corin a private limited company has acquired 100% of coal a private limited company on 1st January 2005 the fair value of the purchase consideration was dollar 10 million ordinary shares of dollar one of corin and the fair value of the net asset acquired was 7 million dollar at the time of acquisition the value of ordinary share of corin and the net asset of coal was only provisionally determined so my question is what was provisional goodwill 10 is the pc 7 is the net asset so goodwill is 3 there is no nci the value of corin limited where was where were we the value of shares of corin limited 11 million and the net asset of coal 7.5 million on 1st january 2005 were finally determined on november 30 2005 however the directors of corin have seen the value of company declines in january 1 2005 and as of february 1 2006 wish to change the value of purchase consideration to 9 million what value should be placed on purchase consideration and net asset of coal as on the date of acquisition what is the date of acquisition 1st january 2005 
measurement period is one year that means up to let us say first january 2006 you can make adjustment and they have found that the value of these shares of Corin limited and net asset of coal was 7.5 million and this they have determined was on 30th November. 30th November 2005 is within the measurement period. So, that value we can take, we can take that value, but the value changed after 1st January that is February 1, 2006 is outside the measurement period. So, those value will not be considered. Is it right? So, now you have to see the answer which contains 11 and 9 sorry 11 and 7.5 which option has 11 and 7.5 option B option B has 11 and 7.5 PC will be changed all figures can be arranged can be changed ok be, within measurement period if it relates to a condition already existing on the date of acquisition and the net asset value will be revised to 7.5 million wherever 9 is there that is a wrong answer 9 cannot be the answer so at least you can eliminate 9 and then you cannot have a combination which does not have uh, 11 and 7.5 only 11 but not 7.5 wrong and this is provisional figure provisional figure we will not take in case if you are able to find the correct value within the measurement period those figures will be taken on the date of acquisition but the question is what value should be placed on purchase consideration and net asset of coal we can do the provisional, but then for accounting purpose, we are going to change those figures but on, 30th, uh, on 30th November, but for the purpose of goodwill calculation, this figure will be relevant. Is it right? We are allowed to change the provisional figure within 12 months from the date of acquisition. So, the intention of the question is what finally you will take as cost of acquisition and net asset value for the purpose of accounting otherwise there was no need to give so much information if you have to take it literally what was the value on the date of acquisition then first two lines are enough the purpose is that you have to apply measurement period concept and answer this question maybe the drafting uh, may not be as accurate as it should be so the answer is B.